but Lack Stephens, but considering your short off season and your surgery, uh, how can you sum up your Australian campaign? Oh well, very happy to that I had the opportunity to perform here in front of uh, my Greek and non-Greek fans. Australia has a special place in my heart, and I always feel like I'm at home here. Um, I strongly believe I'm I will be able to do very well here uh, one day, and. Uh, uh, give that joy and give that happiness to share it with uh, the fellow Aussies here and the Greek community because uh, it, it is a tournament that uh, I, very, I very much love and it is a tournament that I want to uh, um, that I want to uh, thrive in one day, uh, in one day. Simon. Uh, just what, what's your what's your mood about the match? Uh, high level, but uh, I guess uh, disappointing results. So, so where does it leave you? Well, it's all right. Uh, well, it, it, a loss is a loss, you know. Of course, I'm a, I'm a person that uh, tries to fight until the very last point. Uh, but he played better. Uh, he played good, good tennis. Um, um, I'm able to take only the best out of it. I'm not gonna focus on the negatives. Uh, I have a long season ahead of me uh, with a lot of opportunities, I believe, that I'm going to try and grab and um, get, the mess, uh, get the best out of my tennis, get the best out of uh, my experiences that I can always uh, to uh, work towards and uh, help myself uh, improve uh, physically, mentally and um, uh, improve my game generally. Uh, I see uh, today's performance uh, as a lesson that I can use to move forward. Kath. Stephanos, that it seemed like for large parts of the match tonight you played really, really well, really high level. Is it easier emotionally to play well and lose or to play badly and lose? Well, um, I, I played way better than I did last time. Uh, last year, I was completely cooked and exhausted after that uh, five-set match with uh, Rafa. It took me, I wasn't able to recover the way I wanted to recover. And uh, this year, I, I was uh, really into it from the very first point. Uh, I felt good with my shots. I felt good mentally. I felt good uh, in terms of uh, belief and uh, in terms of uh, feeling that passion uh, in the court. I was very close. Uh, the first tie break was an important one. You know, I feel like I could have won that one. Um, maybe should have followed a different tactic. Uh, but again, a lesson. The first one, the first tie break would have been very important. I uh, had every opportunity to, to win it, but I didn't. Uh, I think it would have been a different match uh, winning that uh, first uh, set, which was, uh, which would be, in fact, very crucial. I don't know. Uh, Steph, when he loses his cool like that and starts ranting, do you just try and ignore it, or do you think maybe that's good because he's obviously kind of feeling the pressure? Well, it's 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 for sure funny. <laughs> it's funny. I don't I don't pay attention to this stuff. I know it's uh, players like to do this stuff to uh, throw you off mentally, and uh, um, could be maybe a tactic. It's all right. He's not the most mature person, anyways. Well, the accusation from him was that you were receiving coaching and then there was a violation in the fourth set. Um, were you receiving any coaching? I wasn't. I mean, you saw me the other day uh, losing the score twice in uh, two of my matches. I cannot hear anything when I'm playing. It's impossible. And having the crowd being so loud in every single point, I mean, you have to have super, uh, super hearing to be able to, to hear what your coach says. Um, I was laughing the other day because I think in, in my match with Benoit Per, I think my coach was like five kilometers away, the other end, and uh, somehow I got a coaching relationship. I, I just, I, I think that was the funniest moment of, uh, of the AA Open. Simon? Did it annoy you just because he, he didn't win another game after the, uh, the violation came in? So I wondered if it, uh, if it irritated you. Excuse me? I wondered if the violation, the coaching uh, warning from the umpire had irritated you. Um, ah, I'm used to it. I mean, they've, they've been target, targeting me already a long time. I feel like uh, I've gotten a few uh, in the past, 
and the umpires are always uh, paying attention to, to my box, never pay, paying attention to the opponent's box. And I feel like I've been a victim of that for a long time now. I mean, what can I say? I mean, the, the referees, I don't think they will ever understand that I cannot hear anything when I'm playing because I'm trying to find solutions and try and read the game and recreate the game in my mind before the point starts. So last thing I want is someone giving me, uh, yeah, giving me uh, tips and giving me advice on what I should do. Um, I'm not the kind of person that uh, would try and listen uh, when, uh, when out there uh, competing, playing, maybe in practice, maybe. Stefanos, are you able to identify what you need to do in your game to be able to take that next step? I think I've been able to take that next step, and that next step is serving without pain, something that I was unable to do and my serve was at its worst a few months ago, uh, having to deal with so much pain after every single serve I would hit. So I'm very happy and proud that um, I've, I've gone through that procedure of being able to come back stronger and play pain-free. Um, my serve, I've been very committed with my serve. I've been doing an incredible job uh, bringing it uh, uh, higher in terms of uh, percentages and uh, having it more as a weapon than before. And, um, you know, it was unfortunate today. Uh, I don't think anything threw me off except that he was able to really cover the court well when I was uh, serving uh, and really generating a lot of power and depth uh, from his uh, shots. I'm not very concerned, um, you know, um, that is it. Last one in the room, Matt. Just wondering, have you spoken to your father to tell him not to talk? Yeah, I've had a discussion. I mean, my father, look, he's a person that uh, when he gets into something, when there's a, a lot of uh, action, uh, his medicine is to talk and you can't stop it. It's, it's something that he does from nature. Uh, I've talked to him about it. I've tried, uh, to, I've spent countless of hours trying to figure it out with him, um, but it's part of him. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep, keep receiving uh, coaching violations, uh, even though I will never listen to any single thing he says. But it's fine. They can, they can do that if they want, if they believe it's right. Um, and that's what, that was also one of the reasons last year I went out publicly on, uh, on one of my social media platforms and uh, said that uh, I think coaching should be allowed simply because... Uh, Coaches do it anyways. Some of the, most of them get away with it, and they do it pretty smart, I can tell you. Uh, not from my, my dad's side, but uh, I've seen a lot of uh, situations and I've seen a lot of uh, circumstances where uh, the coaches would get away with it, and, and um, it's, it's a real thing. So by letting it be a thing, I think there's going to be less tension and more clearance in every single aspect of it. And we'll take one question online. Willie Weinbaum, ESPN. Hi, Stefanos. Uh, you spoke about Medvedev's maturity or lack thereof. What do you think of him personally, and how do you separate that from what you think of him as a, as a competitor? Yeah, he's a great competitor. He, he runs like marathon runner. He can uh, run for hours and hours. I'm, I'm not sure myself if that's something that can last very long, having to run so much. Uh, speaking from experiences like other players and champions of Grand Slam champions that I've seen, it had a huge impact to their body. But uh, I respect uh, the fact that he's able to run so much and make it physical out there in a, every single point. Um, well, yeah, he he's one of the biggest fighters together with Nadal. and. Uh, I guess he's earned the title.